right. my name is sorry go ahead hey, my name is philip i'm the founder and uh organizer of um philosophers and gamblers i'm here with anthony one of the my co-hosts um in philosophers and gamblers um uh so we are here to talk about um anthony's very favorite topic mvc uh non-violent communication uh so tell me something about mvc anthony sure uh non-violent communication is a is a practice and a consciousness uh, that leads to better connection between people and also connection with yourself so the point of nonviolent communication is to uh, have better relationships where you can get your needs met. Both of you can get your needs met. Um, there are four basic components to it. There's there's a sort of a template uh, that you follow in order to make a communication, and that that forms the uh, uh, the the principal, um, I guess, process or procedure of NBC. That's the OFNR: observation, feelings, needs, and requests. Um, Observation being, go ahead. Uh, can you say, repeat that? Uh, mm -hmm. Repeat what you said. The the, the four yeah. uh, component steps. Yeah. So th there's there's four steps or phases to uh, okay. a nonviolent communication. That's uh, observation, feelings, needs, and requests. Um, and I'll briefly go go over this. Uh, observation is a neutral, non-judgmental list of things that you perceive in the environment. Yeah. Um, uh, feelings are uh, expression of your feelings, and and these are um, feelings like any mammal would experience. So so these are pretty primitive kind of feelings that you're trying to express. Nothing complicated. Nothing involved with thoughts. Um, and then you express your need, which is uh, some sort of fundamental motivation that uh, that you can have in common with with any other human. Um, and Finally, you make a request, which is a, a, a present and a very clear, um, actionable request. Something like, uh, would you be willing to, and you know, express something um, and you can time bind it to make it uh, very, very precise and actionable. Um, yeah, so the, the whole point of it is to create, um, again, to create rapport with you and the other person or you and a group uh, so you can uh, deepen the connection and more likely produce a strategy that can benefit you both. Interesting. Um, it, it is very interesting. So is this a method and a principle of how to uh, mediate between people, how people um, uh, structure their relationship with one another? Is it a way for them to kind of resolve conflicts like that? Yeah, this is often used in mediation. It's often used in conflict resolution. Um, it doesn't have to be anything technical. It can just be something that you do to get into a better relationship with your boss, coworker, or spouse. Yeah, it's a uh, that is very interesting. So the first step, I think, is you look at it non-judgmentally, looking at the the other person, and just seeing it for their behavior for what what it is without any judgment. The second is understanding what it, these why these behavior make you feel what you feel. You know, just know the behavior, the feeling that you have in regard to that person's behavior. And third is recognizing one's need uh, to be accepted. What you you know, recognizing your value as a person. And then the fourth is making a request uh, to that person you, you know that you have disagreement with. Is that about, is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Yep. Yep. That about sums it up. So what, what are, what are the reasons why, I mean, you, you've been studying this for years as how many years have been studying this? I think it's like told me three years or. Yeah. Just about three years. Three years. Okay. Wow. So, you know, why, 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 what motivates mm -hmm. you to in this learning process? Um, yeah, yeah, and what motivates you to to start this journey, and um, and how did this journey makes you transform you? What kind? How did this journey make change you as a person? Well, I grew up in a sort of a rough family environment in the sense that um, um, my my parents were traumatized by war and by 
their own bad childhoods. Uh, so as, as I was growing up, there's a lot of conflict in the family. Um, my own feelings, my own needs were not attended to um, very carefully. So I, I started to lose the ability to feel what I was feeling and know what I was needing uh, because I, I, I was just trying to people please, trying to uh, act in a way that I can maintain some sort of semblance of harmony in the family. Uh, so growing up, I grew up really reserved, really shy, not not able to communicate myself very well. So I discovered this this method of of uh, communication. I tried it out, um, practiced it for about a year in these uh, practice groups that I go to about, about weekly, and finally I I used it in a live situation with uh, with a family member, and I was just extremely surprised how well it went. It's it felt like a I, yeah. I was kind of faking it, you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing, just kind of yeah. following the procedure and like, whoa, yeah. what happened here? This is, we're, we're actually connecting. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't expect it. So that's when I was sold on it and started to practice even more. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where you, that you, you know, it's just, you have to fake it until you make it, that you have to perform it, apply it to your life and, and gradually and uh, it, you know, it changes you. It change transforms the relationship you have with other people. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it, it uh, transformed the relationship and then it transformed my mind. Once I saw that it was working, mm -hmm. I was thinking, I need to change the way that I think to, to be more conformant uh -huh. with uh, the, the principles here. Because uh, the practice itself, you know, following this procedure, um, uh, it's not going to um, feel right the first time and, and the language itself, the template language, the procedure that you use, filling in the blanks and stuff like that, it's going to sound a little bit stilted. Um, but um, after a while, it starts to become natural. It starts to be the first thought that comes to mind when I'm talking to somebody rather than like, oh, something's going on. Something's wrong here. Let me fix it. It, it just becomes the way that I look at things is more non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. It, it seems like it, it was something that was so to you once you see it in action, once you see that the relationship, the people around you and your relationship with them transform, you have the kind of incentive to delve deeply into it, uh, into the reason why it worked and you apply it to your own thinking and your own self. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Hmm, interesting. So what happened? It, or, uh, did a friend pull you to one of those workshops uh, uh, that, you know, uh, or, or was this something that, you know, you, you just um, found on a YouTube video? Um, I've always been into psychology and into oh. personal development, communications and things like that. Just, like I said, mm. because of my uh, kind of rough childhood, I... I really wanted to uh, heal some of my communication issues. Um, so I forgot exactly how I found it. Um, oh, okay. uh, but but I go to a lot of workshops and things like that. So it was about so that. I guess you're those people that are always trying to find self, you know, self-improvement type person. You're always trying to self-improve. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very... Uh, Good characteristic. Um, I think one thing that that um, make, that really uh, that I really like about MVC is the kind of self dialogue that it promotes. Is is saying that you know oftentimes when we kind of engage in our daily lives, we have these kind of internal monologues that um, we do to ourselves. We often, when we do something wrong, we criticize ourselves. When we, um, we tend to judge our, ourselves very critically. Um, what I, from what I gather from reading the message of NBC is that you, you should uh, be more um, sympathetic to yourself. Um, you know, what do you think about that? What was, is that, is that do you think this is a message from um, NBC? Yes, it is of critical importance to reduce the amount of judgment that you have for yourself and for others, the amount of yep. shame and um, kind of negative criticism. Um, constructive criticism is okay and uh, understanding how to improve and all that is okay, but there is a dimension of ex experience, um, for lack of a better word, it's just shame or judgment. Um, mm -hmm. 
that that we want that with MVC you're trying to train yourself to to not do anymore because we've been conditioned uh, to use shame, guilt, uh, negative judgment um, as a form of discipline, as a form of control. Um, ever since we were a kid, you know, like don't do that, Johnny, or oh, oh, that's great what you did there. You know, that that's a very in interesting observation. That I think for most of us, um, whether in school or at a workplace, there is uh, people telling us that, hey, don't do that. Or if you do that, here are the consequences. Or uh, people criticizing us when we are young for doing certain things. Um, you know, and oftentimes we internalize that external dialogue and that external dialogue becomes our own internal dialogue. And, and it's a voice of how we kind of constrain and, and trap Selves into this kind of, you know, uh, uh, a cycle of vicious uh, uh, um, uh, self doubt and self criticizing. Um, yeah. and, and MVC really just can really help us transform that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I misspoke a little bit. Um, you know, somebody's telling us, correcting us, telling us to do this or do that is not necessarily shame, shaming. It's, it's the additional part that you said, that there will be consequences. And that usually means I will punish you if you don't follow these rules. Um, exactly. uh, so when there is an element of a threat or, uh, or a threat of domination, um, physical punishment or anything like that, um, then yeah, you create this, um, this, this false persona that is, is just designed to please, to appease the dominator. Um, and you start to lose sense of what what's really going on within you. you you're, you're doing things mainly to avoid punishment at that point. Um, so, um, and then we create the society where after you learn to do that, after you learn that people do this to you and, and how to avoid punishment, you, you learn to do it to other people. Mm, so you do it yes. to your children and you do it to your colleagues and, and, and your, your neighbors. Um, and there is not a lot of people saying there's other ways to to work with people. We mm -hmm. just get caught up in this uh, what's called the domination culture. Yes, and, and implicit in that domination is is violence, and whether it's physical or uh, verbal violence, uh, something that we witness uh, when other people kind of physically. Uh, you know, violated us or verbally violated us. And then the kind of self-inflicted verbal violence in our own, in, you know, internal monologue. And, and then as we grow up and become fathers and, and mothers ourselves, we, inf you know, do that same cycle of domination, as you say, and violence, verb physical, verbal violence to our children. And, and this is gonna continue generations after generation. And MVC really has this capacity to transform those relationships, to, to make it a world a much more compassionate, um, empathetic place. Right. right. Uh, imagine a world where we can collaborate um, and have our cards on the table about what we need and what's, what we're lacking, what are, what's obstructing us. And the other person you know, puts their cards on the table and we, we are all collaborating, we're cooperating, working together to get to get all our needs met. That's, I think that's really hard to imagine for us growing up in this domination culture because we're taught to, to hide our cards, to, um, to bluff, to manipulate, um, to fear other people trying to manipulate us. Um, so we have this uh, a very adversarial mentality towards, towards our neighbors, towards uh, uh, the people in our country and towards people in other countries. Uh, so this this goes beyond just the interpersonal relationship. Uh, it, it goes to communities and nations and humanity at large, and even interspecies. Yes, having I I'm re reminded of uh, this Harvard philosopher Peter Singer, who kind of imagined that there is a circle of uh, trust. Um, and that I think his message was to that we should in, 
you know, expand that circle to not include just our most inner, uh, inner group, like our family members, but other people, uh, or whole nations, and 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 even across species. Um, yeah. So I think I feel like MVC really embed the spirit of that, the spirit of compassion, the the spirit of empathy, to not just other people, but to the whole ecosphere, the 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 whole biosphere. Um, yeah. Um, so did you did you find anything challenging about the philosophy as you entered it? Because I know it's challenging for a lot of people, including myself, to to get into this frame of mind that's so different than what we're taught. So did you notice any um, anything as you read it? You you thought to yourself, well, this is this seems kind of impossible. Um, yeah, there are some questionable elements that, um, uh, so I think for the longest time, philosophers have always thought about and, and ponder what is the nature of, what is human nature? Is human nature fundamentally good or is it bad? So if you're a Hobbesian, you think that human nature is fundamentally selfish, people are fundamentally selfish and self-interest minded. And if you are Rousseau, you believe that human nature is fundamentally good and that violence, um, domination is our methods of conflict resolution that we learn from other people, uh, from society. And I, I do think that MVC uh, in, his, um, uh, uh, in his ethos is really uh, embedded within it an assumption of, of human nature that is uh, Rousseauian, uh, mm -hmm. that human nature is fundamentally good and that um, domination slash violence is behavior that are learned it from other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can, yeah. I, I can understand the characterization um, uh, looking at it through uh, a lens of Rousseau, thinking that the, the essence is good and uh, we are mistaken when we're acting in a in a more violent or selfish way. Um, that that generally sounds like the way that I'm I'm viewing NBC. Um, now the the other way, uh, the Hobbesian way, where where everyone's selfish. I believe I'm not quite sure on this, and you know maybe we can work together on this as we continue this conversation, um, brainstorm a little bit. Um, but I imagine that you can also arrive at the same thing from the Hobbesian point of view. Uh, because what is selfishness? Can you describe selfishness? Um, what is in it for me? What is in it for every action? Uh, I, I ask myself, what is in it for me? Yeah. Yeah. And so in, uh, yeah. In, in a sense, that can be a way you can define NBC too. You, I, what are my needs? How do I get my needs fulfilled? So you're, you're very focused on the self, but in a lot of ways the needs are are relational needs so one of my needs might be to get um uh to get intimacy for instance i need another person for that and oh. how do i how do i develop in intimacy well i probably have to reciprocate something i probably have to give some attention and some care for another person and then i can get the intimacy so yeah. in in that respect um i know it sounds transactional and and that's how it starts we maybe that's just the way that we we morally develop we start out with uh, uh, a tr transactional kind of deals uh to get what we need um but i think what happens is as you continue to to uh, to follow this needs analysis like what are my needs what are their needs yeah there starts to you start to intuitively become more compassionate I think it's possible. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just thinking like, as you practice uh, looking, well, what are, what are you needing? What am I needing? How do we make this match? Like, oh, I noticed that there's a lot of needs that um, require us to work together. And and we're not really in a prisoner's dilemma here because uh, uh, I can communicate to you what I need. You can communicate to me what you need. We can actually cooperate. This is actually better than fighting. Uh, there, I, I feel like this is more like fake it until you make it that you know you might start off with thinking that hmm this is what i need this is what i can get by doing this but as you do it you're benefiting other people and you know it feels good 
and you become accustomed to, to being a good person. You become a, a, a provider to the people around you. And, and um, gradually, you know, you, you find yourself transformed. Almost. Yeah. I, I think, I think there is um, um, this idea of sociopathy or psychopathy where somebody um, is, is kind of narrow minded um, uh, or emotionally stunted uh, in such a way that they, they can only care about themselves. Um, and, and when they do uh, do something nice for someone, it's, it's strictly thinking about themselves still. And, and um, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of wrestled with this idea uh, about can this actually lead to compassion? Um, I, I'm not quite sure, uh, but the way I see it is um, if you do this and, and you really limit your um, uh, thoughts about uh, the other person's needs and you're only thinking about the other person's needs to the extent that you can use that to manipulate them to you know, get what you want, um, then you're actually limiting your ability to meet your own needs uh, because you, you have to play so many games in your mind, you have, to, you have to think really hard in order to manipulate the other person. And that that's sort of a um, <clears throat> not as efficient use of your, of your mental power. Well, what do you think of that? Uh, it, it is interesting. Um, yeah. Um, it, you, you do have an interesting, I, uh, I kind of feel like there are for some people um, that like to strategize and like to think deeply about every single thing. Uh, it, it could be a game in some sense. Yeah, they, I mean, like, yeah, I, I yeah, it could, they could make it like a game. Um, like an enjoyable game? Yeah, like an yeah. enjoyable game. Um, so what would you say, so, I heard you said that MVC is not just about interpersonal relationship, but it could also help countries resolve their differences. And that is something that is fascinating to me, that this ability, this MVC methodology or principle could transform not just uh, other people's relationships with you, uh, and, but also entire nations. So can you give us some examples of that? Yeah, there are people who use this work in um, mediation between political parties, for instance. Um, there's a woman named Mickey Cashton um, who created a system called, um, I think it's called Convergent Facilitation. And um, I, I think her claim to fame was to negotiate um, some legislation about um, something something to do with child custody uh, in some state in, in the United States. Um, so they've been deadlocked for many years, uh, this, these two groups of people. Um, and uh, she came in and, and by using nonviolent communication, by, by addressing each other's needs, uh, both of the parties' needs, um, getting them acknowledged from both, both sides, uh, they were, they finally, sat on the table and said, all right, I, I trust that you understand my needs and uh, I, I trust that we can work together now. And finally, uh, after that connection was made, they were able to make some legislation fairly quickly, like within a year. So after, after let's say 10 years of, of just fighting and bickering and not, not getting this and very, very important legislation passed that could have you know, saved lots of kids' lives, they, they weren't able to do it because they were deadlocked and, and uh, uh, her group came in and was able to mediate this. So I think this um, ability to, to train and to practice empathy um, is of incredible importance right now in the United States where, where we live um, to heal this divide that we're having, this polarization that we're having and, mm. and possibly regain some of our liberty and our democracy. Yeah, that, that's, uh, it is a training in empathy, definitely. And um, I, re I recall that the fourth part of the four part process is requests. That's um, articulation of one's 
uh, own, okay, the third process is the articulation of one's own wants and needs to the other person, mm -hmm. uh, whether that person is a state, uh, a person or just normal person or state, and, and then you make a request. Yeah. I find that enormously powerful. I, it doesn't have to be interpersonal. It could be, you know, like you said, two people representing two factions of two um, different states that both of them try to express to each other, articulate to each other their own needs um, for their people, for their um, uh, for the people that they represent, mm -hmm. and then try to work something out. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely a powerful idea. Yeah, it, it's a little bit different than uh, the demand um, con conversation or communication that we're having right now in politics, where the sides, the parties are demanding of each other and they're criticizing each other. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just can't see how anyone could cooperate under these conditions. If, if one party says to the other party, you're stupid, your facts are wrong, and you're evil, you're hateful, you're hurting people, you're killing people, yeah. How's the other side going to say, okay, let me fix this? <laughs> you know, they're not uh, going to say that, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's hard to imagine that anything can be solved when so, one side said, you are, you are dumb, you are an idiot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't solve anything. Ad ultimately, it hurts the other person and make that other, other person feel defensive. And yeah. Um, yeah. nothing gets resolved because of it. Um, but this idea of voicing one's needs and then making a request, not demand, but a request for acceptance um, is yeah. so, really so, powerful. So we've, yeah. we've mostly been talking about the, the self-empathy here where you're describing your own feelings and needs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it's critical. The other half of it is the other empathy. So mm -hmm. when we're talking about political parties uh, and, and you are confronted with somebody with some views that you might have a knee-jerk reaction to, um, mm -hmm. Just like, oh, this is abhorrent. These people are so malicious and dumb. Um, uh, the, the, where MVC plays into this is you wonder, hmm, I wonder what they're observing, what they're feeling, and what they're needing. Mm -hmm. And then you, you go ahead and you ask the questions. So you say, okay, so when this happens, when you think about um, this crime that happened in the city by this minority group or something like that, you know, something that can rouse someone up, and you say, I, 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 I can sense that you're you're very angry about it. Are you needing? And then you 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 uh, guess what need they might have. Like, are you, oh. are you needing some community here? Are you needing a sense of of a physical security? Um, are you are you needing more liberty? Are you needing more freedom of expression? You know, th th these these are fundamental needs that we all have to varying degrees. Um, it, you don't have to have the exact same degree, in other words, as the other person uh, mm -hmm. degree of of um, need. Uh, but we we all kind of can relate to these things, um, mm. so so you can you can ask them like is that what you need and they might say yes to this no to that yes to this, in that act of asking them what they need and 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 their uh, uh, reply the response saying that this is yes that's what I need there's a connection the person sees that you see them. Yeah. It's a powerful idea. I'm reminded of a concept by a psychologist called the theory of mind, where one you kind of try to put yourself in the mind of another person and see the world from their perspective. You realizing that other people are just the same same as you. They have their own self doubts. They have their own internal dialogues of into their their body and think about you know, why they do what they do. Uh, very powerful, it's, a, it's really an exercise in, in, in um, cultivating, uh, you know, uh, uh, this ability to, to think about what other people are feeling uh, and their situations. Um, what is there, I, uh, so thank you so much, this is great. Um, is the, was there another example of, um, of um, mediation between two gangs. Uh, oh, yeah. I, okay, can you tell me a little bit about the story behind that? That uh, there was a me mediation between. I think you you said something yeah. about I, it. I I do 
I, I know little bits of the story about the Marshall Rosenberg going into, uh, oh. I think, South Central LA or, or mm -hmm. somewhere like that, where, where the Bloods and the Crips were in a war and people were dying like every day people were getting shot who's marshall uh who's uh uh for our listeners who is marshall rosenberg oh marshall rosenberg is creative nonviolent communication oh okay awesome okay and then uh how what did he do uh to to mediate between the two gangs yeah um he just brought them out to, to meet each other and it, i I'm not sure exactly how how he did that. I don't I don't know the details mm -hmm. of this story, um, um, but then he was able to let them express to each other um, uh, what what their needs are basically, uh, just like the, the, the procedure I, I explained before. I don't know the deals, details of that one, but I, uh, I know a little bit better the story of um, how you. He, he, so he's uh, his family's from Israel, um, mm. uh, or he, or his family's Jewish. Um, so he went to Israel to um, mediate between the, the Palestinians and um, and well he went he went, he went to a, a refugee camp a Palestinian refugee camp mm -hmm. um, and uh, when when he entered there they were so mad at him that they were calling him names um, because he's he represents America he com he comes from the United States uh, so they. Um, were, they, they were called him a child killer and, and all sorts of uh, uh, slurs. Um, and he is asking them like, well, what's going on? Well, I, I, I guess you're, you're angry at me because, uh, and he noticed that there's bombs around. There's like unexploded shells, like uh, um, United States missiles and it has like United States flag on it. So he's like, I, I, can, I can see why, why you'd be angry. Like, uh, we're sending you bonds when we should be sending you aid you really need safety for your family and all that stuff. So, so they heard him um, reflect on their needs for, for safety and, and uh, the health of their community. Um, mm -hmm. so, so then he was a little bit more open to, I mean, the, the, the Palestinians were a little bit more open to what he was saying. Um, mm -hmm. So then he introduced the, um, the Israelis and you know, they had their grievances and he did the same thing, you know, expressed expressed the, the the needs, reflected on the needs that they were having. And then he asked those the two to communicate with each other. Um, of course, it wasn't. I, I mean, I'm telling the story kind of in a fast forward way. Um, it it took a long time. It, there was a lot of bickering, a lot of fighting, a lot of like like not showing up. That's the the hardest part is to get them to show up together on the same table. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, through this process of uh, of getting getting the, the parties to understand each other's needs to acknowledge each other's needs very very reluctantly they were able to finally uh, meet that's a po very powerful story and the way he go about doing it was was a genius move um by first he was a jew second he was american he goes to the palestinian and say you know i you know it, it, uh, from their perspective, it, you know, this guy, who is this guy? He's American, he's Jewish, he's the enemy. But he comes to them and tell them exactly, you know, reflect to them their own needs by telling them that what they need. And, and uh, they listen to this guy reflected to them, you know, their own basic desire, but their basic needs. Uh, they were much more receptive. Um, I think this is a great strategy that uh, I think all of us should adopt. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's a really good strategy to have. Um, do, you, do you have any uh, things you wanna say about uh, MVC? Yeah, let, I, I can continue the story a little bit and I can okay, reflect sure. on a, another story that um, very similar to that one. Um, so at, at the end of the, his, his mediation and his conversation with uh, the Palestinians, um, uh, from, from you know, from the beginning of the day when they were about to like uh, throw him out for being a child killer, uh, to towards the end of the day when they invited him for a Ramadan dinner, um, I you know that's such a transformation, um, just by using this nonviolent communication. That I was very inspired by this, so I, I started to use it in my own kind of political speech. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Recently, I had a, a a few months ago, I had a conversation with a uh, with an old. Um, friend, basically a mother of a friend um, who kind of spanned everybody on her social media, uh, some some political 
stuff about vaccines um, that that triggered me a little bit. Um, I it, it was against my idea basically about you know, what we should do about COVID vaccines, um, and um, I'm not going to get into too much detail about uh, you know my beliefs, um, but um, with with this woman, I I said. Oh, I understand that you have concern about the, your, the health and safety of the community, and um, and you're, you're doing your due diligence and, and researching, you know, uh, whatever. Um, and uh, I I have my own concerns too. I'd like to share them with you. And then I, I showed you know some other papers and things like that. And she she came back to me and with a little bit more more information about her stance and a, not really looking to read the stuff that I posted. I don't think she was ready to, to jump on it, uh, but the, um, but I, I felt it was still a great success because I planted a seed of like, hey, there's more information out there. Uh, if I just went straight up and said like, you're wrong, this is so dangerous what you're doing, you know, you're spreading disinformation, you're gonna get people killed. Like, uh, here are the facts that you know that's not gonna do anything. Yeah. But but because I was I was saying it in a nonviolent way, she actually invited me for dinner. So I was reminded of what happened with uh, you know, Marsha Rosenberg, and I felt like, oh, this is this is good. This is this is progress towards you know, you know reconciliation of, of uh, different parties and and trying to understand the world, have a shared reality, um, which I think is is what we're really really needing right now in the U.S. It's a very powerful idea. Um, it's a very powerful idea, and I guess um, it, it to me is a particularly personal thing too for me because uh, I think uh, I was always a bit of a nerd. Uh, and like, whenever I hear someone say things that I think is wrong, I just bombard them with facts and facts and papers and, you know, this piece of information and that piece of information. And it never went well. And that's what I'm doing is just conveying to them that they are an idiot. I think that they're an idiot, they're a moron, but, that's not the correct way of doing it. The MVC way is to acknowledge their perspective, their needs, their perspective, and to understand where they're coming from. We, and, and somehow reflect back uh, their needs, their perspective back to them, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then present them with your perspective, your needs, uh, and then make requests. Uh, and then you give them a bit of these facts that are you know, contrary to what they believe. Um, I think this approach is much, is much better in terms of, you know, um, getting them to see your way uh, than just bombard them with facts. Yeah. In addition, it, it helps me to see in their way. So with awesome. this woman uh, who was, uh, um, has been a nurse for over 20 years uh, in, in the medical industry, um, so, so I don't, I, I didn't come to the table thinking that she's dumb. I mean, yes, the, my knee jerk reaction was like this information that she's spreading is dangerous and dumb. But then I thought, well, that's, this is, this is a violent way of thinking. Uh, like, uh, no, mm -hmm. she actually, she's a nurse, she's a healthcare worker. Uh, and, and I, I respect her being the mother of my friend. Um, so uh, I, I come with the benefit of the doubt in a way, like she's not trying to hurt me. She's not trying to hurt the public. She's yeah. uh, she's trying her best to, to help people. Um, so with that open mind, I was able to be more receptive to what she's saying. Now, it, was, it wasn't just me trying to manipulate her. It was like, here, believe my ideas. I'm gonna say some nice things to make you believe my ideas. It wasn't that, it was like, I, 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 I care about you. I know you care about people and you care about me. So let's work together and see if we can uh, spread this care. Mm, uh, so I like it, I like it, yeah. So as I sat with her, I mean, this is a chat. So as I, I, I read her text um, and she gave me information, further information, I looked it up and I was enlightened. I, I learned new things about that, that added nuance to my perspective. So I mm -hmm. discovered new ways of, of dealing with COVID that I didn't know, I, I had no idea about. Yeah, um, I, I think it's a very powerful idea. Um, uh, hidden in your description, I, I deeply believe that there is a there's a sense that human nature is fundamentally good and that we should always give people the benefit of the doubt 
in, in your case, this is your friend's mother. Uh, you you have you express this opinion that you know, she she has the best intention for me and everyone else. Uh, I think this is a very NPC way of thinking. It it's definitely goes back to what we talked about before about the philosophical basis of this NPC, which is um, is adopting a Rousseauian perspective on human nature, mm -hmm. which is human nature is fundamentally good, and we are. Um, trying to contribute to the world. We were trying to make the world a better place. Um, I think this is a great attitude to ha adopt um, and, and to see other people. Um, so uh, more of it is always good. So so, so if, you're, if you're willing, I'd like to go back to the earlier question about malice, about sure. like uh, sociopathy, because I, I, I think um, uh, I just gave you a, like a, I mean, in my experience, that was, that was an easy example. Uh, like, uh, this is a person I already have some good feelings toward. Um, uh, but uh, what if we encounter somebody who is uh, uh, explicitly malicious, who, who is telling you, like, I want to kill you, like, I want to hurt you, or, or like somebody who's, who's stealing from you directly, you know, uh, just, just uh, have taken, taken some things from you or taken money from you, scammed, like I've been scammed before. Mm. Um, I, I, I believe this way of thinking is, is useful even in that respect. Um, wow. But it's tricky. It, Go ahead. Yes, it is definitely tricky. I sense a bit of a, uh, a moral paradox. Um, um, I sense the of good soap operas. <laughs> uh, so can you maybe illuminate what you mean? Um, how can you deal with someone who is who you think has malicious intent toward you mm -hmm. and other people? Yeah. So um, my personal example was uh, being scammed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I got scammed out of a month's worth of rent uh, with this rent scam, apartment scam, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, of course, I, I was very angry when I discovered it, when I discovered that this was fraudulent. And I, um, thoughts of revenge came up when, and I allowed myself to be angry and to have those thoughts of revenge. This is the self-empathy part because I realize it's human nature uh, to, to get angry. It's, it's, yes. it's our way of protecting ourselves. So what am I doing? Oh, I'm protecting myself. I'm trying to keep myself um, cognizant of my surroundings. Um, uh, I want a sense of order in the world. So mm -hmm. I acknowledge myself for wanting these very natural things. Um, and uh, once that kind of died down a little bit and I still had, but I still had the sting of the anger. I still had the um, kind of the ill effects of having malicious intent towards somebody, you know, having vengeful thoughts because it doesn't do a really good number on your body to, to keep these, you know, high cortisol level from, from this anger and distress. So uh, I thought, okay, so how can I use MVC here? Um, I thought, okay, why don't I start with something like uh, a bit like pity, like this person who's stealing from me, they must be poor or, you know, some, in some way uh, in need of resources. But then, I, then, then my, my rational mind kicked in and said, wait a minute, I saw the car she drove out with, it's better than my car. <laughs> like, this person is not in need of material resources. Uh, so, so I, I couldn't convince myself of that. So I thought, well, what kind of person is, um, requires stealing in order to maintain their livelihood in order to maintain their, um, uh, sense of being in the world, they must be in a community where this is common. Uh, other people around them are stealing and lying and cheating that, that might be kind of stressful. Like, I, I don't know if my partner will backstab me. I don't know if this friend will, will steal from me. So I, that, you know, I felt a bit of compassion in that uh, perspective. Like this, per, this person is probably leading kind of a, not, not as stress-free a life as I am with, with my friends and my community who I trust and who I don't really think twice about. Um, so so um, that kind of relieved me a little bit. To, 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 to see that in this person's perspective, in their community and the way that they're, they're raised, you know, not to make an excuse for them, I still would file the police report and I still would do defensive oh. maneuvers. Yeah. yeah. You know, you gotta do your, 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 your duty for the community 
mm. I still I still consider this is an important duty to the community to protect people from fraud and stuff like that. But um, but the the feeling the, the NVC was done on the feelings for, uh, for me. Mm. So I from what I'm seeing, I think you're you're analyzing your own situation. You're realizing that this person did something horrible to you. You feel this deep desire for revenge, this hatred toward this person, and then you, you know, come up with a story. You come up with um, a story about them, how of how they're surrounded by, um, by people that are kind of just like them, and you feel a bit pity, pity toward him. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So in, in that sense, of, they were malicious in, uh, in the sense that mm -hmm. they wanted to steal they, and they were very clear about it. Uh, I mean, in retrospect, they, it's very clear that they wanted to steal. They did not intend for my benefit. Mm -hmm. They intended for their very um, um, narrow circle of, of self. It, maybe it's just themselves. Maybe it's themselves and their partner or something like that. Um, uh, so it's a very narrow sense of self that they're they're upholding mm -hmm. here, and I view that with a little bit of pity or or compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, when I was that small, when when my mind was this localized to benefit this this tiny person that's you know enclosed within the skin sack, um, I was always like looking around like oh is anybody doing anything to me and you know it's, it's mm -hmm. somebody stealing from me uh, I, I just remember how how hard that was to not feel connected with people and to to be so distrusting oh um, i see and um and uh i'm thinking what was i doing at that time i was i was trying to preserve myself my sense of self-preservation was high wow. um and uh i i had an unmet need for community and for trust. Mm -hmm. So I'm just imagining this other person who, who, you know, same thing, they, they, they think that they're going to lose out on life if they don't uh, take, if they don't steal. And they mm -hmm. think that other people might steal from them. So they have to be very vigilant. So I, I can understand that it's not exactly malicious. That's just surviving. That's just yeah. self-preservation. Um, I, I imagine that that kind of person are always in a kind of uh, uh, fight or flight mode almost that you have to fight or you have to run away um yeah. that's definitely not a um you know a a, a thriving flourishing life yeah uh, you have yeah um that's a very interesting that's very very powerful idea audience um mvc certainly is a very powerful idea uh do you want to talk more about mvc um, there's, yeah, I can always talk more, but uh, I think it's a good uh, time to close unless you had some okay. other ideas. Uh, no, this is perfect. This is a perfect time to close. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, what is this? End this?